We are live. Go ahead. Okay, excellent. Good evening, everybody. Um, I will call this uh, August 13th meeting of the Edina Energy and Environment Commission meeting to order. Uh, so, Jessica, can you take our roll call? Yes. Mr. Jackson. Here. Commissioner Dakani. Um, I'm muted here. Yes. Got it. All right. Commissioner Horan. Here. Commissioner Hushin. Here. Commissioner Lanzis. Here. Commissioner Manser. Here. Commissioner Martinez. Here. Commissioner Sutterly. Here. Commissioner Steely. Here. Commissioner Martinez. Here. Student Commissioner Maynard. Excellent. Um, so I have a motion to approve the meeting agenda. So moved. And who was that? Oh, sorry, Melissa. Okay, and a second? Hey. Second, Bayardo. Excellent. All right, any discussion? Those in favor signify aye. aye. We'll do a we'll do a roll call. Aye. Oh, that's right. We gotta do a roll call. I'm sorry. <laughs> Falling into old habits. Chair Jackson. Aye. Commissioner Dakani. Aye. Commissioner Horan. Aye. Commissioner Hushin. Aye, aye. Commissioner Lanzis. Here. Commissioner Manser. Here. Commissioner Martinez. Aye. Commissioner Sutterly. Aye. Commissioner Steely. Aye. Okay, so then uh, approval of last month's meeting minutes. Um, I'll take a motion and second, and then we'll see if there are any um, changes. So can I have a motion to, move, to approve the meeting minutes from last month? So moved. That's all, Ryan. Second. Second. Uh, okay. Any any changes or um, discussion? All right. So Jessica. So Bayardo, do you want to um? That there you are. We got to see you. <laughs> All right, um, so, I will. Uh, Jessica, please take the roll. Sure. Chair Jackson. Aye. Commissioner Dakani. Commissioner Dakani. <coughs> if you responded, you're muted, I think. So I'll, I'll give you another chance here. Commissioner Dakani. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Horan. Aye. Commissioner Hushin. Aye. Commissioner Lanzis. Aye. Commissioner Manster. Aye. Commissioner Martinez. Aye. Commissioner Steely. Aye. Commissioner Steely. Aye. Bayardo, what happened? Can we talk about that? <laughs> uh, motorcycle accident. Oh, no. Uh, about a month ago, so. Are you okay? <laughs> yes, I'm okay. Aww. Uh, broken elbow and few pulled tendons. Oh, no. Few scrapes, no. but, you know, I'm all right. <laughs> well, we're happy to see you. <laughs> um, so this evening, uh, Chad Milner, the city's engineer, um, has uh, come to give some updates I know we Jessica has given us a lot of news about the sustainability um, uh, position, but we'd like to hear from um, the boss of engineering, uh, Engineer Milner, and if you could just sort of tell us uh, what's going on and and what your vision is for the sustainable um, coordinator and the other aspects of sustainability in your department. Yeah, thanks, Member Jackson, and and the rest of the EC. First, I want to thank you for having me. 
And also thank you for the patience here as we figure out how to do all the online meetings. You know, with COVID, it really uh, messed up a lot of stuff. So appreciate everyone's willingness to do it live like this. And then really want to thank Jessica for helping out with the commission. You know, there's a lot of things going on and really appreciate her helping out with the group and it's going very well and, and we're trying to get somebody in this position permanently. So, you know, the beginning of the year, admin made a decision to move sustainability and and facilities into engineering. And some of the reasons they did that is engineering is is got a lot of uh, process improvement experience. We have a lot of experience working with other departments and in the project management strengths. So, you know, Tara was great while she was here. She really liked to focus on the policy and the project management wasn't one of her strengths. So, you know, when she was here, one of the things that we were going to support is that project management piece. And when I look at the sustainability coordinator, I see it kind of two roles is, is the policy side. What's the big picture policy side and what's the, you know, the project management side of, of doing these LED retrofits and the energy management plans. So that was really to help, you know, engineering was going to help with that project management side. And then having facilities under engineering too really helps align three three groups. You know the strengths of engineering with now facilities where we can really embed sustainability in everything the facility does. At some point, you guys will probably get to meet Derek Otten, our new facilities manager. He comes from the Minnesota Zoo. He's got about ten years of experience there, and he's doing great. He started uh, working on the first energy management plan for Edinburgh right now. And we're hoping that relationship with this uh, consulting firm goes well. That we can just push them into all the other larger uh, facilities and City Hall is next on our list. We know we have some CIP projects to, to do lighting retrofits there and also energy improvement stuff. Um, sustainability, the higher, we had 160 applications. So a lot of applications we had to go through. So Reese Kareem, our city management fellow has been helping me go through those and we got it down to 16 people last week. And that's still too many to do interviews. So we did phone interviews, 15 minute short phone interviews last Friday. We got it down to eight people that we want to meet with that we think is going to, any one of them would be a great fit. Experiences all over the board from um, college sustainability coordinators to um, large healthcare companies running sustainability, just, I mean, across the board experience. So we're looking forward to meeting those eight next Monday. Jessica is going to be on that panel with a few others and and then go uh, second round interviews late August, early September. And we're really looking for a higher date of October 1st or somewhere early October. So then when I think about this group, that person would probably point meeting with Jessica in October sometime. And depending on the experience of that person and comfort level, it might be November, December, they would take it over entirely. Um, so we're looking forward to getting that person on board so we can get Jessica doing more of her water resources role. Um, and then me back to the engineering and helping out with facilities. So I think I'd stand for any questions right now if you'd, if you'd like. I mean, we've done some great things over the last year or just recently. If you've seen the new EV chargers at City Hall, uh, those things are now live. There's two additional chargers at City Hall. So the one is at an ADA or handicap parking stall and the other side is, is a public spot for anybody that comes to City Hall can, can charge if they have a charge point account. And staff can use that one. Then we have another, a different system, Green Fleet. And this is our first Green Fleet charger that's not at the public works facility. And assessing just purchased a Chevy, Chevy Bolt uh, early August comes meeting. And as soon as they get there, we'll have our first all electric vehicle at City Hall. We really want to showcase that. So that's why we put those chargers right up front by City Hall to showcase the EVs. And we have infrastructure in the ground now that we can just keep adding chargers up there as the fleet turns over. We have three of them that are ready to go. And then we have conduit and electrical power all the way to the back corner of the parking lot where we can just keep adding chargers as fleet turns over to build that electric fleet at City Hall. So we're really looking forward to that. I already mentioned the Edinburgh project. You know, we're looking to create that energy management plan. Um, I think those are the kind of the two big projects. I know the one big one on, on everyone's work plan this year was the climate action plan. We really need someone to focus on that and not having a coordinator. That was something that we delayed until we get this new hire. So then once the new hire is on, I think it really depends on the experience of that person managing a big public engagement project. And then they first just got to learn kind of the city background and policies and, and workings before we can jump right into it. So that we 
we see that as a strong 2021 work plan item for that person and also the EEC. I guess I'll stop there and just take any questions if anybody has any. Well, thank you so much. This is really helpful to hear the, the big picture on this. I really appreciate it. Um, one thing I found, and I think I sent to Jessica, she had mentioned to us that you have a staff person working on the um, a benchmarking. And you, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but there's a B3 website that shows yep. our benchmarking data. Um, and um, I thought that was really useful. Um, but where are we at on um, getting the website up and running for the benchmarking? Well, we currently you can find information at three different locations, and that's the problem. You got three different locations, three different data sets, and I don't think any one of them is real user friendly. So we have spreadsheets with all of our meter data, meter data from all of our buildings. So it's this giant spreadsheet, and it's by month. So we just wow. have so much data that we're hoping to get like a Green Corps volunteer or some intern in the near future to comb through all that information. But you're right, the one spot is the B3, and that's being updated by uh, utility building by finance every month. There's also the Hennepin County Energy Benchmarking. So we passed that ordinance last year for energy benchmarking. I think Jessica's going to give you an update tonight on where we're at for that energy benchmarking. But they do have a, a, a fifth public facing web page. And I just talked to the person today, and that web page is going to be updated next week with all the buildings that have been. Uh, all the data that, from the buildings that have been done that have been deemed acceptable, you know, they in compliance. So all that information is going to be pushed out in the next week or two. Wow. And the other spot is the it was a third web page where some data was shown, Energy Star web page. Um, so Reese is the one that updated information this year uh, for our building benchmark, 20 biggest buildings. I had one of our facilities people pull together the next largest buildings, and we're going to see if we got time for her to enter just additional data. Why not add more data on those buildings and continue to build those data sets if we have it, at least get it housed somewhere. So that's kind of the update on the building benchmarking, and you'll get some stats from Jessica later on tonight. Wonderful. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? Oh, yes, I have some. I have a couple. Yeah. Besides the EV chargers that you're considering for the city hall, does the city has any plan for public public charging? Like is like putting somewhere else besides uh, the city hall. And the second one is regarding the climate action plan. Sorry to bring it again, but based on your time frame on the, on the timetable you gave us, um, we're thinking that that climate action plan wouldn't be starting the planning maybe by the second trimester of 2021, right? Based on what you just mentioned yep. on hiring, and people getting trained, on um, getting all the information of uh, Dyna City. We, uh, based on, it, this is what you just mentioned. So that yep. means yep. we won't be having, not a climate plan, not a climate action plan, but starting the planning, right? It all depends on the experience of the person that we hire. If they have zero experience with community engagement and building big policy stuff, I don't see how we can throw them into that without some other experience. So it's really dependent. There was other people on this thing that have already done climate action plans at different organizations. If we get one of those people and and they're the hire, this could start early 21. It's over well, a year process to build that plan is what we had anticipated. Sorry, but that's why we are interviewing them, right? That's that should be the main one of their main tasks. I get, I suppose. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm really their... new to the commission, yeah. but I'm 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 really disappointed that this is not really a priority, not even for not not, not even for you for the city. So that's why I'm a really a little bit worried the timetable you're giving us because. That's why you're hiring a sustainability coordinator because we haven't we haven't been able to move anything this month due to COVID and also because there's no, no there's not a person in charge of of leading the the the, the action plan. So now mm -hmm. you're saying you're inter you had 200 people or 160 and then you you came down to eight, and now you said that it will depend on their experience. Well, that should be one of the things you should be asking to those people who are you, you are interviewing. That should be the priority of the sustainability coordinator, I think, 
because you know we don't have a lot of time you know the, the most of the cities the size of edina they have plans and they have a neutrality goal established by 2050 they have a very ambitious goal for 2030 and we're still just planning well not even planning because we don't have somebody that coordinates so i'm a little bit worried as part of that commission that you're not not you but the city is not making this a priority noted i mean we have to we don't have the people so that i mean it's an unfortunate terror left because we would be well on a way of establishing that now and i think it is a prior one of the keys to this new position but it's not entirely a position our position you know i'm not going to hire somebody just because they have climate action plan they have to be a balanced individual that meets the priorities of this position and there's many priorities of the position so that'll be one of the considerations one of the priorities and then we'll develop a plan when that person gets on board and see who that is and what their background is. On your other question, the EVs. So we have the public charger at the north ramp we have now at City Hall. Uh, on our work plan in a transportation planner work plan is the uh, EV strategy. So how are we gonna plan for future transportation and EV and where are we gonna potentially locate some of these? So we do a budget every year to do EVs. So we did that at City Hall this year. I want to continue to build out EV chargers at um, some other strategic locations around city. So I think later on your agenda is is a capstone project that we had U of M uh, students working on, and that was a EV strategy. So they put together a, a draft plan or a plan that they thought should be our strategy, and then Andrew Scipioni and I are going to take that the next steps and then bring it for this group to review and see where we should start to build those additional chargers. A golf or Edinburgh, or or should it be more of a public, uh, you know, transportation area like the, um, you know, it's not a kind of property, but it's the Metro Transit location at Southdale. Should we do that to have public charging at those locations? So, or should it be at a school? So I think we're open to all the different areas and would work with those property owners or our own property owners to develop more of those chargers going forward. Thank you. Excellent. Any other questions from folks? All right. Well, uh, thank you again, uh, Engineer Milner, for joining us. It's, it's wonderful to hear your perspective. And I think um, uh, Commissioner Martinez put, we as the commission have been under quite a bit of pressure uh, for this climate action plan. And I know a lot of people are on here um, wanting to see that. So I, I think that Hilda speaks for all of us when she says, that's really important to us. So I'm, I'm glad yep. um, to share that message with you. Um, yeah, it's great. Right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Okay. And then thanks, we Chad. have. What's that? Just said thanks, Chad. Oh, yeah. Okay. So should we move on to Jessica with your annual water resources coordinators report? All right. Thanks. I'm gonna share, I put together some slides here. And I just wanna, um, I'm gonna keep this pretty brief. I've got about 20 slides and I'm hoping to spend like a minute or less per slide just to kind of give you a flavor for all the stuff, the activity around water resources. And then if something really sparks your interest, I'd be happy to answer questions about it at the end. So I, for the last few years here have just gotten in front of the commission just to kind of share what's happening with water resources. We realized soon after I started uh, at the city of Eden about five years ago, and this position is only about seven years old, that um, there's a lot of stuff happening, but we're not always good at telling the story of what's happening. So then it might feel like there's there's no action when, when there is um, a lot of activity going on. So I just want to give you a quick lay of the land here for what water resources management looks like. For the city of Edina, we look at um, flooding and drainage, manage lakes, ponds, creeks, and wetlands, or what we call surface water, and then groundwater. And of course, all of these things are kind of one, the same water, but uh, they're they're managed uh, a little bit kind of uh, separate uh, is the conventional way. And then we, we try to bring those together through this kind of one water mentality. And then pollution prevention is a big part of the of, of a city's water resources management program, and then of course, community engagement. The overarching plan that guides the work that we do for water resources is called the Comprehensive Water Resources Management Plan. 
and that is uh, a, a plan that is mandated and and similar to the comp plan, the comprehensive plan, it has to be updated every 10 years. So this plan focuses on water resources and it covers runoff management, flood control, and clean water. And then I have this little arrow off to the side for flood risk reduction strategy and clean water strategy, which were two kind of deeper dives that we committed to in that 2018 water resources plan. So the flood risk reduction strategy, this was just approved by council this last April and Commissioner Manther was on the task force. We had a task force of eight people, uh, eight residents from the city of Edina, and they were from all over the city and had different uh, experience with flooding. There was is a report that was published uh, and approved by council and that covered uh, the types of flooding, different factors for flood risk, what's driving the increase in flood risk, and then city sectors of work. There's a whole presentation I could give on just this flood risk reduction strategy. So this is kind of just your um, snapshot of that. And then uh, I can direct you to some other resources if you want to go deeper. Briefly, we, as a, briefly what's the blue? Okay. The, the blue on the map is the, um, there's two different uh, levels of risk shown on the map. So there's the 1% annual chance flood risk. That's the lighter blue. So that's a one in 100 chance of that happening every year. So you might have also heard of it referred to as a 100 year flood. And then the darker blue is what we call the 10% annual chance flood. So there's a one in 10 chance that any year you could experience that a flood event of that size. So you might have also heard of that referred to as like a 10 year flood. Um, so if you wanted to um, find out what the flood risk is for any parcel in Edina, you could pop onto this website, enter in that address, and it works just like a Google map or, a, or whatever browser you're using, uh, and brings you to that parcel. And then there's some uh, tabs that kind of walk you through what that means. Um, I couldn't show them all here on this screenshot. Um, and then uh, links to more resources. So we put together also a bunch of fact sheets as part of this effort that describe how sump pumps work and rain gardens and uh, sanitary backflow preventers and uh, various dry flood proofing, wet flood proofing, things that a homeowner might consider to reduce their own exposure or vulnerability to flooding. So all of this work, uh, we are going, we've, um, council has approved a major amendment to that comprehensive water resources management plan. So we can take everything that we learned through that task force process and incorporate it into that overarching comprehensive water resources management plan. A spin-off of that work is this Morningside Flood Infrastructure Project. So there's a, a project page on bettertogetheredina.org. I invite you to take a look at that. And really, we are looking at there's several sectors of, of work. So at a city, you can deal in uh, infrastructure, regulation, emergency services, and community engagement or outreach and education. Outreach and engagement, excuse me, is what we called it. Uh, and there's an opportunity in, within that infrastructure realm coming up in the Morningside neighborhood in 2022 and 2023. So this project is really taking a, a really focused a look at uh, what we can do for infrastructure because we have these opportunities with street reconstructions. That's what's shown in blue and in orange on that map where uh, we could take advantage of some infrastructure options uh, since the streets will be open. It's a pretty... Um, uh, major project, so a good opportunity to, to incorporate some infrastructure there. Uh, another kind of related to that flood risk reduction, there is two lakes. Uh, well, we have several landlocked water bodies in the city of Edina, but Arrowhead Lake and Indian Head Lake are uh, two lakes that are up to that uh, So when we have really wet years, like in 2019, then water level water levels rise. They don't really have anywhere to go uh, quickly. Usually the only way to get rid of water, uh, the only way to lose water would be infiltration into the ground, evaporation into the atmosphere, transpiration, which is essentially plants sucking up water and exhaling it into the atmosphere or uh, artificially uh, like putting in a pump and pumping it out. And so there are several homes around each of these lakes and we wanted to define when the city comes in and, and does pumping and when it's up to those residents to do the pumping on their own. So if it's something that's 
you know, protecting a home, the city's going to get involved. If someone um, is worried about, uh, you know, the, their shoreline getting a little more wet than in the past, that's not something that we're going to get involved with, but we could lay out a process to let other people know how they can do that on their own if they so chose. These lakes both have uh, lake associations. The other thing we committed to is a clean water strategy. And this is uh, on the work plan for 2020. Uh, and the council wanted us to focus in on Lake Cornelia. There's been a couple uh, years of documented uh, harmful algal blooms that can be toxic to people and pets if you ingest enough uh, water when there's a harmful algal bloom, uh, blue-green algae bloom occurring. Uh, and the Nine Mile Creek Watershed District is a partner with our clean water work. They completed a lake study in 2019 and found these different categories of work uh, dealing with non-native fish, managing nutrient-rich sediments, controlling curly leaf pondweed, which is an invasive plant, and then managing watershed runoff. That's the path to solving uh, or, or addressing clean water in Lake Cornelia. So this is a quick, uh, there's a lot of stuff happening at Lake Cornelia and a lot still to come. So we've been doing annual invasive curly leaf pondweed control since 2017. And in this graph, you can see in, in 2017, the number of sites that had curly leaf pondweed was every single one. So every all 125 sites that were sampled had curly leaf pondweed. And each year that we've done it since, we've seen a slight de uh, a decline. And in 2020, the lowest uh, number of sites that have curly leaf pondweed present. That one, though, that plant dies off mid-season. So unlike native plants, it has a, a weird uh, life cycle that causes all this extra nutrients to be released right in the middle of summer and causes algae blooms. So by managing that invasive plant, we can have a positive impact on water quality. An alum treatment was conducted in spring of 2020. That's to control all that nutrient and phosphorus that's coming from the lake bottom. Uh, there are a lot of goldfish in Lake Cornelia. So this picture is a survey from about, I think a little over a month ago now, of um, uh, uh, electroshocking and harvesting and, and tagging of goldfish. So we, uh, water, the re water resources community knows a lot about carp as, uh, and, the, and the havoc they can wreak on uh, water resources. There's not a whole lot known about goldfish um, so there's uh, the watershed district is uh, got a grant from Hennepin County to research that as they are um, coming up with a plan for managing those non-native fish. Uh, Roslyn Park stormwater filtration project. There's a, um, a a feature that's being designed to be installed in Roslyn Park. That's going to be on the August 18th council agenda. So if you want to know more about that one, you can check it out there. And then a shoreline restoration project that's in progress, and there's a Better Together web page for that. So I invite you to take a look at it there. A couple other projects that don't really just fit neatly into a category, so I'm calling them notable projects. Uh, Mill Pond at Sunny Slope Road. On the left, you can see a before picture where the shoreline was crumbling and there was some erosion. And then after, uh, reinforced stream bank and you can't see it in this photo but some topsoil is added over the top of the rocks and seeded with a wetland seed mix so it'll look more fuzzy than in this this shortly after construction uh, photo and that'll grow in uh, some shrubs were planted with that project also and then the Arden Park restoration so this project is just wrapping up this fall uh, there's a new stream alignment Shelter, new shelter building, new trails, over 35,000 plants were planted and uh, it increased flood storage. So it solved some flood problems and then also has some stormwater treatment. For the, our other flooding and drainage program, we have an interactive map with some self-service tools. This is commonly used by um, developers or um, uh, homeowners that are doing projects with their property and want to get a better sense of the water resources and where the flood risks are and how far they've got to be back from uh, a shoreline, for example. And then we have policies getting into that regulation realm for stormwater management, erosion sediment control, flood plain development, and then also private wells. And so those um, guidance documents are all on our building department's webpage and they have different uh, triggers for when they apply to projects. Um, 
In our surface water, we manage uh, aquatic vegetation. Aquatic plants are really great, especially uh, or, or when they're native, we want to encourage those. Uh, and we have a few lakes that have organized lake associations and work with them on water quality and um, other services. Groundwater is also in this purview of water resources management. We have a brand new groundwater wells, wells interactive map. So this is another one where you can uh, pop into this map, search by address and see if a property has a well, and then also the status of that, if it has been properly sealed or not. In our wellhead protection plan, we encourage sealing of private wells so that there are fewer conduits to groundwater, which we want to protect the quality of that. That ground, deep groundwater source is the water source for most of the city of Edina, although the Morningside neighborhood gets some of their water from Minneapolis. We have a brand new private well policy so that if a property is redeveloped, we tell them what we expect them to do as far as dealing with a private well, when they're allowed to keep it, uh, and when they have to have it sealed per state law. We have a well sealing grant that's 25% of the cost to seal a private well. Uh, the um, eligibility criteria are, are really simple for the city of Edina. Hennepin County also has a grant and they fund up to 75% of the cost of a well sealing. So I heard from one uh, uh, resident who qualified for both grants and got the the cost 100% covered, and she was on a fixed income, a retiree on a fixed income. So without that, it might have not been possible to have her well sealed. Sealing of a private well is between $1,300 and $2,000 for most wells in Edina. And then we are due to update our wellhead protection plans. That's essentially how we protect our groundwater resources that supply the wellhead so that we can distribute the drinking water to residents in Edina. And that is something that is led by the Minnesota Department of Health. A lot of the staff that works in wellhead protection has been reassigned due to COVID. So that is on hold until they are ready to come back and pick up this wellhead protection work. That's a plan that gets updated every 10 years. This is a, a graph of the private groundwater wells that have been sealed over the course of time. So uh, you have to disclose if you have a private well during a property transfer that was in the mid 1970s, that well code was established. So by the late 70s, early 80s, uh, folks started to um, uh, have those wells sealed at property transfer. Uh, there are about 39 residential domestic private well users. So their primary water source for potable water, or drinking water is a private well. So I was surprised to see that when we were first really getting all the data into a really visual um, format, that there's still 39 people that had their primary source of drinking water from a domestic, uh, a private well. Uh, Stormwater management or pollution prevention is a big part of the water resources management. So we have a uh, we're considered an MS4, Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. We have one and it's uh, a source of pollution and so it has to be permitted. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency issues a permit to cities uh, and City of Edina has one of those that there, it's a five-year permit and we're expecting to get a new permit uh, anytime now, the MPCA is gonna release that. And that essentially has uh, all the things that we as a city have to do to to comply with the state uh, um, uh, pollution prevention plan. And that is essentially comes down from the Clean Water Act. We also, we do a lot of erosion and sediment control inspections and enforcement as part of that permit. And then we have uh, stormwater best management practices or what we call clean water best management practices. And it requires us to inventory, assess and maintain those. So for our operators, is that yeah. where street sweeping fits in? Yep, so there's a section in that permit that's called essentially housekeeping. And it's things like, you know, managing your stack piles and sweeping the streets and, and that kind of thing. Thank you. We have uh, thousands of structures. A lot of the system was built in the 50s and 60s. And so just like any other infrastructure, it wears out over time and needs to be repaired, renewed. Uh, or replaced. Uh, so these are some photos that we found through uh, inspections over the years of things that 
need to be corrected. Some of these photos are getting a little bit old, but just to show you kind of what we come across in the field. And then we uh, put some work orders together and our public work staff goes out and helps us get those back into working order. Uh, and then illicit discharges. So uh, an illicit discharge is anything that goes in a storm sewer that's not supposed to. And with a few exceptions, uh, it's pretty much just rain and snow is the only thing that's allowed. Uh, other things that might be an exception would be like water from firefighting or something like that. Um, so here's some examples from illicit discharges that we've enforced on in the city of Edina. So a leaking dumpster, the um, one up here with the tire in it, that's what we think is um, uh, like drywall compound from a redevelopment project. There's uh, the top middle, some a petroleum of some kind uh, that it seemed like someone in their driveway had a spill and then it rained and that washed down the, the street gutter down into Minnehaha Creek. Uh, the top right, that's some um, pool um, uh, material. I, I, I can't work the diatomaceous earth. I think it's some like a pH balancing thing. Um, and then of course, grass clippings, a super common one. And then on the bottom right, another kind of joint compound type thing that there was a, a spill in a pregnant lot and they were just driving back and forth over it. And actually that one, you could see like the little goose prints all up and down the street as they're dropping in and out of that. Chloride, uh, we do ongoing training and technology upgrades for that. We have uh, the MPCA has a new property manager training. So it, um, now there's opportunities for operators to work on roads, operators to work on parking lots and sidewalks, and now uh, property managers so that people can get on the same page about expectations and um, uh, service. Uh, the city of Edina received an environmental leadership award at the 2019 World Health Symposium and partly for that uh, chloride model contract that we developed in 2018. Uh, and that was something that what we were invited to present at the New Hampshire Salt Symposium. We did a virtual presentation um, because there's nothing like it in the country. So we're really proud of that. That is a project that was initiated and championed by a master water steward. So Sue Nissen, one of your neighbors, uh, was uh, kind of came up with the idea, like, let's help people who are hiring contractors, private contractors, know what to ask in a contract. And then some segmented plow blades. We tried these out this last year. We're not the first ones to try them. Other cities, Bloomington and I believe Eden Prairie use them too. But in such, instead of one big long blade, it has multiple sections so that it better conforms to the shape of the road and does a better job of physically scraping snow off the street so that you don't have to use as much salt. So in this picture on the bottom right, this is an operator took this picture where in the, the the far off section of street was where the uh, segmented plow blade was used. And the closer to the blade uh, is where it had not been used. So they felt like it was doing a better job of clearing and the operators love it. The mechanics think it's a little bit of a pain, but the operators love the new blades. For community engagement, we have uh, several channels that we reach out to people through and then several partners. And I'm just realizing now I don't have the watershed districts on here, but uh, those are our partners. So we offer, um, uh, workshops and how to transition your lawn into something other than turf. We do um, some outreach at Open Streets on 50th, although that was canceled this year. And then some other things that folks can get into, like the Adopt a, Stream, a Storm Dream program. So this was launched in Design in March of 2019, and it's metro-wide. So in the 720 metro, anyone that lives in that community can go onto this website, adoptadrain.org. And there's all the drains in the city, and they can sign up to essentially pledge to keep it keep it clean. So this is a, a chart of the adoptions. We uh, the data is getting a little bit old now because this is only through 2019. So by this next year, we'll have an update on that. We sponsor uh, people who sign up with a welcome kit, and they can get a free uh, yard sign to include. That's what's shown there. Typically, the clean water. Uh, group that we're, that the city is a member of uh, is at the state fair promoting um, signups and that's not possible this year. So they are offering uh, as an incentive this free tote when you sign up or if you are referred, if you refer someone else and they sign up through Labor Day. 
And then they um, have a, a bunch of, they're really active on Facebook. They supply content to cities so that we can use that in our social media and channels also. And then they've got a video that's been uh, co-produced by TPT and Hamlin University on that program. Natural resources stuff. We have a whole bunch of sites, Braemar Golf Course, both the Academy 9 and now the 18 hole course that have been reconstructed have uh, a lot of native areas like Cornelia Shoreline. Restoration is in progress. Fire Station 1 turf conversion is complete and starting to grow in. It looks awesome. They do because <laughs> the postcards haven't gone out yet. Um, and then uh, the pollinator friendly resolution, which Commissioner Horan was um, the lead on, on that, was adopted this last April by council. So here's some pictures. Uh, the Braemar Academy 9 is in its fifth year of establishment and it looks picture perfect out there. So it's uh, restorations look a little ugly in their first couple years. So we are we are continually showing people the Academy 9, which is um, a really, really great example. Um, and I think that's my last slide. So just a, a kind of this last um, uh, list of other information that we have available. So permits for um, aquatic vegetation, various plans, policies, other agreements, bathymetry maps. So essentially, if you want to see what the contours of the little bottom look like, uh, FEMA floodplain information, all of this stuff is available in our water resources library. So I just wanted to kind of give you a flavor of all that stuff. If you have questions about a, a specific item, I'd be happy to go into more detail about it. Thank you, Jessica. I think that your water presentation is my favorite meeting of the year. It's uh, just, it's wonderful. Um, and I'm so glad you're able to fit us in on, on top of all this other stuff because uh, the work you're doing is, is just so exciting. So anybody have any questions? No, I just want to second it. This is this is awesome stuff. Cool. Yeah, so and, and um, Jessica, maybe one one maybe one question. You know, um, yeah. you know the the water treatment, uh, water treatment plants, and water quality. You know, from the incoming plumes, uh, plume from St. Louis Park. Um, that's all working as um, designed, and everything's going well with that. Yep, yep, we're doing some strategic pumping to control how that plume moves and the Department of Health has been doing some uh, monitoring of private wells in the area to see what the, the health risk is. Um, and they're moving on to having it designated as a Superfund site, partly just to access some more funding for future mitigation and management of that site. So. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? I think there's a web page and we link to some FAQs on our web page too, if you want to really dig into the details and see some some maps yep, that show I, the extent of that. It. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Anybody else have questions? Yes, I have a question. This flooding um, web page that you just meant that uh, I think it was also that you mentioned and it was also on the on one of the uh, Dyna publications, do, can you track how many people use it? Like, is it being is it being used? I guess I guess so. But uh, can you track that? Yes, that is a good question. We can track that. I didn't look up the stats before this meeting, but that is something that we can. We we have that information. Oh, okay, that's good. So I guess, like for example, after the storm of Sunday, you you should or before the storm, you probably you have a lot of people going in and trying to to see if they they have an issue because sometimes you don't don't you don't know until something like that start happening right right yeah and I, I it would be interesting to see if there's a pattern you know with like a spring snow melt or something if folks start to really try to find information uh, so far what i've heard is when people are are like house hunting or looking for a property to buy that's when they kind of come across this map as they're okay. just searching um, and then that just raises some you know things and, and I think it's just really important that people know when they're researching properties that's something that's so important to, to, to at least have a good idea of. Right now in Minnesota you are asked on a property disclosure if there's been a history of flooding um, but you know that 
what does that mean to different people and, and how long have they lived there and have they really experienced an event that would have lent to that? So I think this is a good way to get an idea of what your risk is without relying on the, the disclosure of a current owner. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Anybody else have questions? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jessica. That was, uh, I like the idea of having it as a storytelling. Um, it, the story is great. It's, it just, I think the city loves water and uh, it's fun to hear all the great things the city is doing. So I like the format too. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Jessica. Very interesting. Thank you. So, did we, um, did we have community comment? Can people log on who are listening, or um, did we get any uh, communication? So, we did not get any correspondence, and then uh, we also do not have any callers that are on the line right now. Uh, they would not have the option to speak anyway, uh, but we don't have anyone calling in to listen. Um, and then on YouTube, it's a little hard to tell how many people are watching, but we did not get any correspondence. For this okay. meeting. Good, thank you. All right, so we're on to reports and recommendations. Um, so a progress report on where we are in 2020. So this was in the packet, so I'll just pull it up here and then if you have any questions, um, you can let me know. It's in here somewhere. I thought I attached it. I will pull it up here and from my other uh, I did not see that as an attachment. In my okay. okay, I'll pull it up here, and then if it if it didn't get in the packet, I will get it added. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so um, this. Uh, a quick update for each of these initiatives. So on this initiative one is on hold until coordinator is hired. Initiative two, that's next on the agenda. So I'll just hold off on that one and let uh, Commissioner Landis give us an update on that one. Oops. Initiative three, this is the business recognition program, which that is um, just moving along just fine. So uh, I'll let Commissioner Horan give an update on that one too. There's some news there. Initiative four, this is the cross commission uh, event with HRRC and the city council has removed that initiative from their work plan and replaced it with one to uh, lead community conversations about race, justice and policing in 2020. So that one, uh, that's the update on that one. Initiative five, this is also on the agenda. So I'll just pass over this one and let Chair Jackson give that update. And then initiative six, this was the Earth Day event that was canceled because of uh, COVID-19. Thank you. So should we move on to um, Mr. Lances? Yes. Um, initiative two, uh, it's basically on hold. I mean, uh, I know that Commissioner Martinez um, Anna. Anna, Anna Martinez uh, had reached out about wanting to help and assist and uh, I reached out also to Twyla about possibly having, um, you know, education at the, uh, about, uh, you know, at the, at the, at the farm, uh, the farmer's market so, and or uh, uh, open streets and uh, I think I'm still waiting on a reply from the city yeah. about uh, whether we're allowed to or not. And if any of them are still actually still open or if we any all of the events have been canceled though, for, for the public. So I was down at the farmer's market last week and the city does have a booth set up. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> if you could circle back with Twyla um, or Jessica, I don't know which is easier for you. To get a hold of her through you or, or Bayardo doing it directly. Um, I think that you could um, uh, table there. 
um, and she's got materials, but the the city does have a table set up um, at the at the site. So it's Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoons. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will check in with Tyla personally, and um, I'll follow up with uh, Anna. See if uh, we can find any volunteers. I mean, I'm 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 sure that. I can handle it. <laughs> well, if you need an extra pair of hands, ask us too. Absolutely. But, yeah. It's a, it's a, it is a nice um, event. A lot, there were a lot of people there, I'm surprised. So um, it's the kind of crowd that would want to know. <laughs> the farmers markets go through September 24th. So there's still several chances to get in front of that audience. Mm -hmm. And then the Open Streets on 50th event has been canceled. So that that's, been canceled. yeah. So I think the farmers markets are probably the only option left. The only option. I think so. Yeah. The other only uh, thing I can think of, I think we, you mentioned it, was the was the Earth Day event at the at the school, which obviously did not happen. <laughs> um. So that's all I have really here now. Yeah, and also if you need, like, I mean, I, I can definitely help you. Please let me know what Tyla says. But That's if right. we need more people, I can probably ask, like, other Project Earth members if they would be willing. And I'm sure a lot of them would. I, I, I feel like it's a responsible thing to try to keep it to a minimum. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm sure that if, if, if I'm able to do it alone or if Tyla can assist, then that'll be more than enough, or maybe you can come in and help if Twyla is not available. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, and I think for Twyla, she can provide some materials, but we, she's so busy, I think if we can take that off of her plate, mm -hmm. she's not like tabling, but she's helping other people to do that on her behalf, I think that would be a, a good for everybody. Yeah, if it's possible to do it with social distancing, I'd recommend having a partner because it is, you know, it's lonely to do it by yourself. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so the um, initiative five, the park initiative, I got a memo just or actually Jessica got a memo from um, Carrie, who's the um, uh, liaison for the Parks and Recreation Commission. And they were charged with looking at sustainability and equity in the um, decision making for capital improvement in the parks. And the memo that Terry sent me had a lot of things like safety and convenience and things like that. Nothing really on sustainability. So I've been trying to get a hold of the chair of the um, Parks Commission and I've been unsuccessful, but I went through and took, there's a questionnaire that we developed um, and Tara, you know, finalized it, but on um, when a builder comes in to build a commercial building, they work with um, Terry Teague and his department, the planning department, and we hand them a questionnaire with um, ideas for buildings to be sustainable. So I took that form and pretended that the parks department was a developer coming to build a building and ask the same question. And then I, I tweaked it a little bit um, because it's the city and we can be a little more invasive because this is our, our world. And also um, some of the questions were uh, irrelevant for a city actor. So that's what this memo is that I sent out. And then at the end, um, uh, so I had, it's a questionnaire just like the developers get and then at the end, the priorities, once you've answered those questions, um, things that you can do. So I guess my first question is, Jessica, is the best way for this to come from our commission to their commission rather than chair to chair? Um, yeah, you could probably do it either way. So if your preference is commission to commission, I think that that is a good way to go and makes a lot of sense as, as a group you could have all the your comments compiled and send it over as a group. Okay. Good. So um so this is like I said, this is the questionnaire and then I'd like to start with the priorities and then take comments from people. Um so at the end of 
priorities. The first priority is to um, incorporate the park into the stormwater management plans. As Jessica pointed out, we've got some areas that are really flooding and the parks, especially like in Morningside, are gonna be an important part of what she's doing. And so we should always um, start with what we're already doing. The second thing is to minimize the energy footprint of buildings. The second is around uh, parking and paths to uh, discourage uh, using cars and to encourage carpooling and biking and walking. The fourth priority is to reduce the solid waste created in construction, so that's green deconstruction, one of Commissioner Horan's uh, favorite topics, and then um, encouraging ecology education opportunities in the park. So um, I know they do that at Highlands Park. They have a summer program called Creepy Crawly Critters. Um, and it's wonderful. And I think if every park had the opportunity for people to learn about um, being outdoors in Minnesota, it will um, be a good use of our parks. So that being said, do I have, does anybody have questions or comments about this? Um, what do you guys think of the priorities? Are those is that the order you'd look at, or do you have other things that when they're building a new um, warming house at a park or redoing the parking lot or any sort of infrastructure that they're putting in, um, is there anything that I've missed in the priorities that they should be taking into account? And then questions as well that they should be answering. I guess one thing I didn't put in here was um, using um, green building techniques. But I think, is that part of the questionnaire? Sustainable design and energy, um, the carbon footprint of the materials used for construction. So that just asks the question. I don't put it in the priorities though. Um, is that something we should add or is it okay to just ask the question? I think it's okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think it's okay to just ask the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is our opportunity um, to really showcase for the rest of the community what the city can do, right? Because the parks are pretty um, high priority. So, if there's anything that I've missed, um, uh, let me know, I guess. And so what I'd like to do though is, is change this to a um, memo from us to them as opposed to me to read it. Um, if uh, people are okay with that. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I um, probably one thing to bring up that I know that Hilda spoke earlier is, is it possible to incorporate EV chargers into the parks? Um, can you scroll down, please, Jessica, to the transportation part, sustainable transportation? Um, you're right. I don't have it in there. Um, I don't know. How expensive is that to get the wiring in for an EV charger, Jessica? Do you know? I don't know, but I bet Chad would have a good kind of opinion on the probable cost. So. I could ask him and follow back on that. Okay. So I believe, uh, I'm sorry. I may no. not um, agree. Uh, let's make a note of that if we could, and then we won't approve this tonight, because I think you're right that we want to um, have that as at least part of the questionnaire, if not part of the um, priorities. Is there is it reasonable to, to not ask the question, are there opportunities for recycling and or, or organics, but to say it? such that our expectation is that they would put that infrastructure in to any new park facility? Um, because, well, because again, if the question is, are there opportunities? Uh, there are always opportunities. You know, I mean, any yeah. park setting would have an opportunity for an organics and a recycling receptacle. Again, just again, making it be more of the concept of this is a priority for the city. So, um, you know, 
again, being mindful in the design and planning that that is just something that just automatically has to be taken into consideration. I guess the reason I kind of fudged that is when we've been to these trainings from Hennepin County for the commercial um, uh, organics, there's a high level of contamination in both the recycling and the organics in the front end of a business. And I know that's one reason they um, got rid of recycling in our park because people would put dog poop in there. Um, so that's that's why I hesitate a little bit because um, there it, it it really is the general public in the parks and um, it would be great to be able to do that and I agree with you it is a priority but contamination is does pretty much spoil it. I understand the point. Um, this is going back many years back with Diane. Um, we did that same thing because that has obviously been the pushback for years and years that, you know, we can't trust the general public to put their waste in the right receptacle. And I mean, at that point, and again, this was many years ago, uh, the contamination rate was not as high as some people had reported or thought. So that's just anecdotal information because I, did some of the digging through the trash at the parks at that time. But again, if you know, it, again, that's just obviously my own personal thing. But if that, if we always kind of fall back on that, then I, I, don't, I don't know how we ever make any forward progress. If it's, if it's everywhere, everybody is, it becomes part of the infrastructure and part of the expectation. And I, to me, that, should definitely be where we're at as a city at this point. Yeah, couldn't like like couldn't you like I mean like make that up like tell that like include that like recycling and organics in the parts and maybe just like have like a I mean I don't know like how we could do this but maybe like as part of the of next year's work plan we could have like an education campaign like focus like because I guess it's not only in the parks where like the contamination happens like I it's probably not only with dog poop but like you know like public spaces that contamination occurs or couldn't you like just like have an education campaign specifically based on like focused on that so melissa so, how would you phrase uh c under managing waste i i I'm, i i think you've made a very good point but i don't know how to word it well i know and and it, it maybe it doesn't all of them are questions so perhaps it doesn't work to make it be a statement but um you know, it, you could do a statement and a question saying reducing solid waste is a high priority for the city. Have you given the public the opportunity for recycling or, or and organic recycling? Right. Is there is yeah, Michelle, a, another way to say it, you know, I mean, are there have you provided have you provided three different waste stream receptacles? There you go. I think that you should do that. I understand the re, um, maybe the organics piece because that contamination, it's, and it's all new and everything. But at this stage, there's really no excuse for not having a trash bin right next to recycling. I mean, that's basic green action that all of us can take. So I just think, yeah, I think, like you said, have, do you have a provided two bin or three bin system? And I think it's okay to maybe phase in organics because organics can really get contaminated and be useless. But I just think the basic minimum of recycling and trash has to be there. I totally agree. And that is a great point about, because we've had that conversation 8 million times with people too, having the recycling bin next to the trash bin not just random receptacles thrown wherever in the park, having them next to each other makes the difference. And I've seen in other cities where they have a wire basket. So it's not a closed close container. So if somebody does throw something in there, you know, you can see it. So it's like if it's not just, you're more kind of just put cans in there then. Well, and I think the, the bins that we have currently are well marked and visually easy to identify. Um, and so I think that should just be, man, you know, just establish that that continues to all the new stuff.
So, um, uh, Jessica, when you're done there, can you scroll down to the bottom for priorities? And we can mention that there too. Um, reducing the solid waste, creating construction and operation of the park. And then the last other thing I heard was you wanted to make this a little bit more um, from commission to commission. Yeah. There, uh, let's see. Okay. I have a question. Like I can see that they're like in the in sustainable design, same like the B part that it says like, well, the buildings meet the sustainable buildings 2030 energy goals. Is that like a standard for all like new constructions or are you just like asking that specifically for the parks? That's the standard for government, uh, Minnesota government buildings. Oh, okay. So like all, cons like everything has to like meet those standards or is it like, or do the cities like adopt it kind of? Uh, we are not, we, it's, it's, it's the state guidelines for what we should be doing. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't remember. I, I looked at it when I wrote this, but I don't remember now, sorry. That's okay, don't worry. <laughs> I think the 2030 energy goals are um, that every year they're supposed to become a little bit more energy efficient, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I think it's That it's supposed to get better over time. But I, I think that I really um, don't remember. It might be nice to add a bullet under sustainable design, just asking if they have um, gotten any other green building certification for the building, as far as the actual building materials. So would that would I say like, do any other building materials? Uh, how do I phrase that? Can you ha have you applied for any other green building certification? Mm -hmm. How about that? that yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. That cover it on. Yeah, that should. I mean, we could add, we could list examples of certifications, but that maybe is not our place. Yeah. Like you list GBC and FSC, the Green Building Challenge. Good. Sure to have we do on the water. Richard, are you still with us? Um, any other comments? Is that you, Richard? Any other comments from people? Excellent. This is really helpful. Um, so what, what we want to um, wait and get the answers on the EVs and then approve this next month. Does that sound like a plan? Why don't we, why don't we do that? So we'll, we'll have the comments and then if you want to take another look at it between now and then too, and go through the fine tooth comb. This is 100% within our control, so we can we can play with this however we want. Um, and because the parks department will make the final decision, but they they will defer to us on our environmental um, expertise. So um, excellent, good. Well, thanks everybody, and uh, I think we can move on. So the next one is the elections. So whoo, um, I have. A lot go on my plate these days, and um, I've decided that I would prefer not to be chair. Um, it's, I'm not giving it the time and energy that I think that it requires. So um, it's been a big honor to serve as your chair, but I'd like to um, open the floor for nominations for um, a new chair to the Energy and Environment Commission. And I guess um, I would like to uh, nominate Hilda as, as the new chair. Is that something, Hilda, you'd like to do?
Thank you, Caroline. Well, I'm really new to the commission, but I don't know if um, I don't know if any anybody else is interested. I will happy to be part of the disconnected of the to be the chair or vice chair, but I don't know. I would like to know what the rest think about it because I'm really new and I know people that have been here for one or two more two years. So I don't know. Maybe somebody else wants the the position. I, um, I'll be happy to take it, but I just wanted to everybody to be to agree with it. So, um, anybody else like to step forward as the chair? Hey, Caroline, this, this yes, is Richard. Uh, Richard. Um, it, it, it helps when I don't have my mute on. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Are you back? I'm back. Okay. Um, do you want to be chair? <laughs> <laughs> you just came back at the right moment. Yeah, right. Oh, well, well, I, I did I did my stint as being the chair and the vice chair. And um, I, it was, it was, I mean, it was great. So, um, but I think um, uh, it would be bad. Well, first of all, I'm termed out coming up here. Oh, that's and, true. Uh, for starters, and, um, and I think it's good to get um, some fresh new ideas. Um, and I think um, climate action plan is, um, you know, a pretty important um, component of what we need to do going forward. And, um, you know, so I think, I think it's important to have somebody that's passionate about climate action plan, uh, you know, to, you know, to be in a lead position for the group here. I think that would benefit the group immensely. Thank you. Um, so I, I think what we'll do is we'll take nominations for both positions and then we'll just vote on them together unless there's like a, a contested thing. But anybody else like to throw their name in the um, in the hat for a chair of the commission? One last time, anybody else putting their name forward? Excellent. And I'll, I'm going to throw another throw another plug in. Um, you know the experience of um, the learning experience of just working with the city and doing going through the planning um, and uh, you know running meetings. Um, these are these are huge um, to me, huge life skill experiences, and um, you know they just they just help in so many different facets of of you know life, how you work, where you work, and um, you know all kinds of things. So um, so I, if, if anybody is remotely thinking about it, just don't be shy, speak up. <laughs> I think it's a great opportunity. Okay. So, and then um, for the vice chair, Lauren, do you want to say a few words about what it's been to be the vice chair? Sure. Um, I would echo what Rich said. It's very, it's a really good experience to be able to get like that back room view on how these meetings come together and have a hand in really uh, forming the proposed agenda. Um, so uh, yeah, as so Richard said, very good leadership experience as well, um, at least to observe the leader in action <laughs> and be prepared to step in in his or her place if needed. So is there anybody who would like to serve as vice chair? And if there isn't, I, I, I could serve as vice chair, but I just, I can't um, put the agendas together and stuff. I don't, I don't have the um, bandwidth right now, but, um, but if, if anybody else would love to do it, I would be very, very happy to step down entirely. Bayardo, you want to do this? <laughs> do you have time? I just started a new job. I don't think I want to commit myself to that, to be honest, at this moment. Okay. You popped up well, on the, the other, screen. The, so that's the, the other thing, too. Who is that? The other thing, too, um, to think about, this is Richard. The other thing to think about, too, is, um, you know, the vice chair is, you know, ideally it would be somebody who, who eventually would like to maybe, or is considering stepping into the chair position. So um, that's something to think about also.
Paul, is that something that would interest you? Um, you know, I'd consider it, um, I term out at, at well, my first term is in, in March, but uh, let me let me get back to Hilda on that. See if I uh, well, again. so what we could do I need somebody to to vote tonight, right? Um, you know what, uh, Carolyn? Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm I am going to pass though right now. Okay. So, um... How about if we have a student on that? No, they're not a voting member. We could. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, um, well, do you want me to serve as your vice chair then, Hilda? And then um, if you have questions on how things work, I, I can uh, be at hand. Let's see. Who else? I'm, I'm looking at the list here. Ukasha, do you don't want to um, be vice chair? I, I'm a, I'm, I guess I'd rather have someone with a little bit more experience, but, um, but if you'd like it, we can put your name in. So that will be signing up my life, right? <laughs> well, no. In this case. Oh. Um. And, um, and Michelle, I think you and I have talked about this and, and you were not interested, right? No. Nope. <laughs> Melissa? <laughs> I'm turning off also. <laughs> okay, so I think it's you, Caroline. Okay, well, I'll stay on as vice chair and I'll make you do all the work. <laughs> okay. so, teasing. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Okay, so no, we've, got, we've got a, um, a slate, it looks like. And um, any, I'll take one last call. Anybody else like to be either chair or vice chair? Okay, all those in favor of Hilda Martinez as chair and Carolyn Jackson as vice chair signify. Oh, we got to do a roll call, don't we, Jessica? I think we, I think we lost Jessica. Yeah, she looks offline. Okay. It is a great job. I've had a lot of fun. Um, of course, it was really so fun I. with the chair. Yeah. And, uh, and Paul, what we can do too is. Um, you know, if at some point you're you'd be willing to take up and take a leadership position, you know, think about it. We can have another election too. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. Yeah, so think about it, and um, and we can revisit this. There's no urgency, but um, but uh, the good news is is that um, Lauren is getting married, and the bad news is that she's leaving Edina. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, Lauren. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, congrats. I appreciate that. Yeah, and it, the timeline got moved up, so. Wow, when are yeah. you getting married? Well, October, and we're doing a background, a backyard ceremony just with family. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Celebration next congratulations. Thank you. That's so exciting. Thank you. It's been such an honor for me to serve in this role. I don't know if this is a good time to talk about that, but. Um, I've been so inspired by just this experience um, in serving in the various work groups. I led the education outreach work group. We hosted various events, um, the climate action plan study and report last year. I, it's just been a really great experience and um, I'm excited to see the new members on board and really um, going towards um, new frontiers and I just Hope that you all continue to just inspire the city to take a strong leadership role in the coming years. Okay, Jessica, are we, we back? Yes, I am. Um, that's okay. <laughs> We're like, wait a minute. We're all <laughs> So we're ready to um, take a vote. It's going to be uh, Hilda as the chair and me as the vice chair. Okay. So if you take a roll, please. Did you do motions already or uh, if did you did, I missed them. No. Okay, so yeah. can I have a motion for that slate, please? So move. Move. I move. Second. All right, did you get that, who that was, Jessica? I did not. If you could just indicate your name, that'd be helpful for the record. 
Um, I second, which is Okasha Dekane. Thank you. Paul, did you move it? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move it. All right, so we have a motion and a second and final discussion. Okay, Jessica, can you please take the roll? Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Commissioner Dakani. Aye. Commissioner Haran. Aye. Commissioner Hushin. Aye. Commissioner Lanzis. Aye. Commissioner Manser. Aye. Commissioner Martinez. Aye. Commissioner Satterley. Aye. Commissioner Steely. Aye. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Hilda. And now I'll hand the uh, gavel over to you. Uh, not like now? I should take yeah. it off. <laughs> oh, that was, that was fast. <laughs> so uh, you can sort of see um, the agenda uh, we worked on, and I, I kind of hope to get you in the planning, but we wanted to make this all um, open and everything. But uh, Jessica can kind of lead through what we've done on the work plan development. Sure. Yep, I can um, show you what I've gathered as far as feedback that folks have provided. Um, and then there won't be any action tonight, so it will be just a discussion still. And then at that next meeting in September is when the commission will take action on their proposed work plan. And then um, uh, I'll show you what I've got here. So um, in September, when you approve your proposed work plan, there's still going to be a little bit of revision from um, staff, which I will give you my comments as we go along so that you're not surprised by anything. Um, and then also the city manager and then uh, city council. So um, what you propose will hopefully stay pretty intact, but it might get kind of changed just slightly based on the council's um, priority. So. Um, I'll show you first um, the, the feedback that I heard when I asked you to rank your top choices. So this is what that ranked look um, total looks like. So a couple things before we go into the details here. Uh, Commissioner Martinez had shared some additional work plan ideas. And so I'll just introduce this to you before um, I show those other results. So I'll, I'll introduce them here and then um, Commissioner Martinez, if you have anything to add, um, you can see that. Oops, maybe it's just a little too big. Um, so it was these last W, X, Y, Z, and double A. So um, I can read these off to you. So research and report on ed entities that could conduct a full GHD emissions inventory that the city began it could employ. Research and report on various routes for the city of Edina to take in order to establish carbon neutrality. Outreach to community regarding energy efficiency measures and excel renewable programs. Promote a citizen's pledge on climate action. And then the last one, research and report on possible transit demand management measures to reduce single occupancy vehicles. And that one, I think the energy, or, I'm sorry, the Edina Transportation Commission did a study and report on that. And then we also had a, a student engineering capstone group do a little bit of work on that and the um, the transportation planner is coming up with a policy right now so I think that one is kind of in progress and that would be something that you could uh, review and comment on that policy as that begins to take shape so just kind of revise that one a little bit uh, in real time here commissioner or I should say chair uh, Martinez is there anything you'd like to expand on for those um, well, thank you, Jessica. Well, those uh, mostly, like all of them, came a little bit of uh, uh, the result of what the commission did, that the the committee did. So um, that's why I wanted to include them because that's uh, what part of one of the 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 outcomes of the of the committee was to define what what type of action. Besides revising the action plans, it was deciding which type of action we kind of could also do as a as a 2021 working plan. So that's why I include them. So I know I know people you don't have enough time to look at them, but maybe maybe we can maybe they can revise it and decide to if they want to work on those. And then uh, folks were ranking one through five. If you ranked beyond five, I didn't include them only because it would have skewed 
it a little bit for folks that didn't go beyond five. So I just took your top five if you did more than that. Um, and this is kind of how those results shook out. So climate action plan first, the enhanced tree ordinance and city tree strategy second, to go packaging and plastic ban ordinance third, business recognition program and outreach fourth, green building policy fifth. And then I, based on that, and I, some of the other feedback just kind of in the in the notes that folks were sending um, was um, some of the various education and outreach things, folks were kind of uh, like splitting and combining and reorganizing. And so I just kind of lumped all those together as residential outreach. So this is kind of my um, interpretation of that to start. Um, I think at a minimum, the climate action plan definitely, I think you guys are really interested in that one and the sustainability coordinator is also going to want to hear from you on that one. So that seems like an automatic one. Green building policy, that's a staff work plan item for 2021. And that sustainability coordinator is also going to want to hear from you on that policy that has yet to be drafted. So I think that is also um, an, uh, um, a good one to include. The business recognition program, you've done a lot of work to build that. It makes sense to keep that uh, as an annual recurring item. And then uh, reviewing the CAS fund capital improvement plan every year, that's actually part of the policies. I think council is hoping that you would provide feedback on that. So I don't see um, those things taking a, a you know, business recognition program. Commissioner Haran, you can talk more about the commitment of that one. I think you noted that it's a pretty um, small commitment. And I think that reviewing the improvement plan would also be a, a pretty small commitment. The other ones that uh, I think are up for discussion the to-go packaging and plastic bag ordinance, resident outreach and the tree ordinance, those were all like your top choices. So I think you could include, you know, one or two or three. So all of them, if you wanted to, um, based on kind of your bandwidth for, uh, for the next year. And then my only other comment would be if you, for the resident outreach, um, try to narrow it down to just one or two messages or actions that you're asking people to take. Uh, I heard, organics recycling, water quantity and water quality, and then climate action. Uh, those are all pretty big. So I think if you tried to do all of it, then it would be really hard to really um, give a clear direction that, or action that you want people to take. So maybe just choosing one of those to focus on for 2021. So I have a question. Um, Jessica, for the water, is there something that is how much would you like to have us be helpful to you in that? Is there something that is on your uh, work plan that is something that you'd like some community um, outreach or engagement with? I have a pretty candid audience around the Lake Cornelia work already and some good channels for reaching out to people. Um, I think we have some good momentum because there's projects that are in the works for that. Um, if folks have feedback on uh, on how um, neighbors are, are um, if that's sufficient or if we need to be doing more, let, uh, I'd be interested in hearing that feedback. Um, and then I think for adopt drain there's a lot of really good uh, marketing and advertising happening for that. So I don't know that that would be, uh, you know, there's already a lot of good stuff happening for that one. So I don't know that there's a whole lot that we could add for that one. Um, so for the water part, um, if there's messages that you're not hearing or that or questions that you're hearing from the public, um, we can have that discussion and see if that's something that you guys want to take on. So last year, what we did is we put it in the parking lot. So that if something uh, would come up, then we could pull it up for the, uh, what do we say, the bike rack. <laughs> Connected to Jabra Link 360. I think for uh, water quantity, I think that um, like public education, uh, if I were going to spend a dollar on something to, for water conservation, uh, public education is important, but it's probably not the first way I would spend my dollar. I'd probably look at like, um, pricing and tiering or um, working with um, uh, like commercial 
for industrial users. Um, so I think for water quantity, that one I think would be kind of the, on the bottom of the list as far as priorities for resident outreach, because I think there's other strategies that I would that would have a bigger, like bank, so to speak. And that's something that would be staff driven, right? Just got a question for you on quantity. Um, how well how well are we tracking um, actual usage right now? Um, you know, one of the things you know it's one of those things where it's hard to um, make changes or do things when you know. I mean, we have we have adequate water supply right now, and we have um, and, and it's high quality. So the um, you know the thing is, if something changes. Um, there's an impact to our overall water quality. There's an impact to quantity, um, and, and and something changes. It's good to know where we were before we go forward and do something different. So I guess the big question is, do we have adequate record keeping now as far as how much we're using and you know all those kinds of basic metrics? Yeah, we annually report to the DNR the millions of gallons pumped. I'm not sure how refined if we can go like day by day or if it's like month by month um, on quantities, but we have some good data going back, I think at least 20 years on that. Um, the trend over the last 10 years or so has been uh, a good one. And it's partly because of the pricing that was a change that was made in 2007. So it costs a little bit more if you're gonna use a lot of water just for irrigation versus if you're just using it for inside your house. Um, and then also it's been so no. wet that folks just aren't irrigating very much. So it might also be a little harder to like convince people to irrigate less when they're already just not because it's been raining a lot. So it just might not be like the the most impactful to give that message right now. So if there was some kind of so if there was some kind of emergency or change and somebody said, well, you know, if we had to implement some kind of changes, you, you feel comfortable that we have enough historical data that we could rely on. I think so. And and you bring up a good point too, yeah. Commissioner Manser, because um, you know, with climate change, there's all the predictions of more rain and more intense storms, but there's also a chance that we could be uh, experiencing a drought in the future. And so are we prepared for that? Um, that's a good question. And how do you how do you prepare for a drought? Well you start planning 10 years ago. So um, you bring up a good point just about, you know, you, you, you can't just kind of turn that switch when you're in a crisis. So I think it is something to keep an eye on. Right now we're seeing a, a trend that is going the right way as far as like a per capita use. Um, overall, our water use is higher just because we have more and more people, but uh, the conservation practices need to be working. Um, partly because that internal plumbing code is getting better, but also it's just been so wet that folks are just irrigating a lot less and, and we don't we don't know what the questions may be it, it, also you know yeah you know it's, it's hard to anticipate what kind of questions or what kind of you know crises might happen where we have to rely on this data so but it's good to know that we have it i think another thing you know if we take it away out of that resident outreach so with the um, business recognition if you're making connections with businesses, you know, businesses and multifamily housing are some of the biggest water users. So uh, there's some programs led by the University of Minnesota Technical Assistance Program where they can get an intern essentially to come and help them troubleshoot and make a plan for uh, better conserving water, which is with their operations. So that might be, you know, if you really want to make a big like dent in water use, hit up some of those industrial users and help them figure out where their leaks are or how they can reuse water that's that's i think the the biggest opportunity zone so maybe we go through the business program to reach out to people and say if you want to do more let's hook you up with these other programs that are already existing but could we also do like i mean i know you like said it's not a priority and like the biggest like water consumers are um like industrial buildings and stuff but like couldn't we do like of like residential outreach like about like home retrofit like in general like including like water and energy which like i think the energy one's like one of the things that the like the climate action committee suggested but couldn't we do like that kind of outreach like would that be worth it 
I think if you wanted to do go that route, you could say, here's all the residential things you could do. So weatherproofing, irrigation system sensor, you can kind of bump all those into a, a category that's like residential, you know, single family or even multifamily. Um, then I think you can kind of tackle all of those in one kind of package. Um, all I'm, I'm just cautioning against like, let's talk about organics and climate and water and everything because that's just a lot for people to really take on and say, okay, so what, I'm gonna do one thing. What do you want me to do? Uh, I like this, um, the way you've narrowed this down to seven things and then we can maybe um, vote on them. Is that, this is a good list. I had one last okay. thing um, for the tree ordinance and strategy. That's a staff work plan item. So that I think in the in the spreadsheet, I said it could be studying report or review and comment, and that would be review and comment then on what the staff comes up with. So, all right, I, I apologize for cutting in there. I'm done now. Oh, no. um, I just um, had one suggestion on. for the climate action plan. If we um, if we're anticipating some gap time between when that is when the task force is established and perhaps whether or not EEC will have some a couple of folks sitting on that task force, if we could break out the climate action plan into one, you know, A sitting on the task force, hopefully, and then B maybe select one of the actions that the climate action plan committee had come up with, but to work on in the interim. Yeah, I agree with Lauren. I think that um, a little bit the, the work, the objective of the committee was to identify what can we do that will eventually help the task force that's going to work on the climate action plan. So, so it will be, that's that's uh, it will be good, like maybe to consider one of the at least the the, the 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 first two that I that I mentioned, which I think it was W. B and WP, something like that, <laughs> which was a. So the, the W, um, I talked to Mike Fisher about that. He is actually because um, one of his partners in his architecture firm created the um, regional indicators. And according to him, and I could, you know, there could be research to think that's a pretty revolutionary thing and they're isn't anything else um, to look at the greenhouse gas emissions um, other than the regional indicators. And that that is um, unique among um, states really, or, or regional or metro areas to have something like that. So that was his um, report on that. Um, so that might be one that would be finished pretty quickly, but, um, but I don't think there are any other resources out there unless we wanted to get um, Excel and uh, their CEE and Excel and, um, Center point to give us the information like they did for the partner of energy. Um, I can. Mm. Well, so 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 you think there there's no way we can try to see if somebody what, what so if some because what like somebody can do the or what if there's any institution trying to develop. Uh, because I know, I know there are protocols for cities to develop their greenhouse gas um, uh, emission inventory. So why well, don't we try to uh, see if, if yeah. we, well, no, I don't know, maybe, no, not, maybe not there for us, sorry, not for us to do it, but for maybe see what is the information needed and if eventually that information is uh, it's available or accessible. Uh, in, in order to try to see if we can do the inventory, because you know, from the six um, the six, uh, climate action plans that we revised, all of them they have an inventory because you need to to know where where you stand in order to measure your your well your application of the action. So that's why it the inventory becomes like a one important asset for the for the action plan. That's why we thought that eventually we will need to work on that. Yeah. No, you make a very good point. So, um, like I said, it's just one one point of view from that. So, I, I, that's actually something that will help the um, climate action plan. You're right. That's the first thing you've got to do. Is where are we at? What's the baseline? Yeah, but, but, but we, can, we can maybe not do that one. Maybe we did the following. Like, 
well, like because this is only to recommendation, right? Like to try to see if we are able to do any or the city is able to do any of that, like establish maybe a, neut a neutrality goal by a certain date or that's why we that's what the second we propose. But I don't know what people think. What you, Jessica, that you're in the in the city think it that it will be possible or that will only just to do to the action plan to the climate action plan. I think these are, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I was just going to add on to what Hilda was saying. So it would be research adding to the information that the task force could use when they begin. No, I think that'd be really helpful. So help me phrase this. So research um, what others have done and who could do a GHG mission the, inventory. The Tools for um, yeah, so tools. for creating a greenhouse gas emissions inventory. How about that? Yeah, research. Yeah, tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know that for that you need data, so that's what that will also help to know what kind kind of data and if that data is available or accessible. So that's why we can start doing that before before the the climate action plan start. Mm -hmm. Like that. Wait, sorry, but I kind of got lost there. Like, what's the difference between that and the regional indicator? Well, there may not be any difference. Um, okay. That's that would be for the people working on that to determine. So okay. it might be thirty seconds. There's nothing out there, or it might be a, a, a really uh, interesting report that says, "Oh, look, here are the tools that are available. Here's one that costs ten thousand dollars. Here's one that costs ten cents." Right. Um, okay. But uh, like as part of like the committee, like I was looking at the San Luis Park um, Climate Action Plan, and I think they do like one of for their benchmarking, they do use the regional indicator. So I don't. Well, yeah, I mean, like if we still want to do it, it's fine. But I don't know if like there's much more. Well, it might be a fast one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we. That's what we want to do. With some research tools. Maybe we arrive to. There's no need to do another thing. And use uh, the indicators. I don't know. But you know, the task force is going to ask the same question. So I think that's really useful. Yeah. I mean, this might even roll up into uh, the task force charge, do you think? Or does it need to come separately okay. from that? The point is to get started before the task force is formed. Yeah, I, I don't think the task force can do anything without data. So it, we we just are like a library. Here's the data that we find or that we have found, and then they decide what to do with it and how to um, use it. But you got to have a baseline. And this is for 2020 work plan, which starts in January, also. So it kind of, you know, who knows when the task force would be assembled and start, um, mm -hmm. but. It could be, um, yeah, you start that off in January, February as you're waiting for for that to, to get some legs. So, Jessica, um, what's your recommendation on how many of these things we should do? You know, I was thinking about it and I kind of anticipated that question. <laughs> and um, I think I might even poll the um, the commissioners that have served for a little bit to get a sense for what your perspective is on, on the time that it takes to accomplish some of these things, because I'm, I'm not sure. I think um, climate action plan could be significant. I think green building policy, business recognition program, and the CIP, I think those would be pretty small. Um, you know, I think I think the tree ordinance and strategy would also not be super huge because I think city staff is working on that and they would seek your review and comment on that. I think resident outreach to be an event or a campaign. So I, I think this is all achievable, but then again, I, I you know, I, I think it's up to the volunteers to kind of give a sense for their, for your bandwidth and your capacity. And what experience do you have? Does this feel like an achievable to keep them all or should we, should we, uh, narrow it. Well, in addition, um, the to go packaging and plastic bag ordinances, we already have all those reports or a lot of that material that could, should be easily to compile again. So 
that and it's been asked be for by the council in the recent past. And we already now, you know, that's the thing that Michelle and I had talked about those years ago when this was all put together is we questioned whether it was the right time, given the fact that we didn't have the the organics infrastructure citywide, and now we do. So to me, that one is overdue and would not take a ton of time. Yeah, and then like you said, the um, business recognition program, we've got the task force that'll be doing a lot of of that stuff um and it's already you know it's already structured and so i i feel like it's very doable that list my opinion the only thing that will take a lot of time is a resident outreach and that would that will that'll be a big lift um that'll be it'll take time to organize volunteers it'll take time to put an agenda together and then whether it's just one event or a series of outreaches That'll be a big lift. That'll be a whole committee, kind of like when um, Michelle and I created the green building or the green business program. At, at the front end, it was a lot of work to try and figure out um, the audience and the materials and stuff like that. So I think the resident outreach will be a, a big job, but the other ones, I agree, are not particularly huge, except the climate action. I, I would argue that the uh, um, compost, um, you know, the outstanding work you know, still to do on compost outreach, I think is probably more significant than we're giving it. I agree. I mean, we put a lot of work to get to where we are now. Um, and I think it's still gonna take a fair amount of work to really make it successful. So I'm hearing keep all of them. Uh, resident outreach is going to be potentially the uh, one of the bigger ones, and maybe focus on the organics recycling and getting that to a good place. I don't know if like like if it be too much, but like I and I mean I guess that it wouldn't really be like home like retrofits or anything, but it could be like actions that residents could take to like reduce their, or not their carbon, but like be more sustainable. I don't know, like would that be too much? Like if we did like energy retrofits too and the like water or something, or would that, I mean, yeah, I feel like organic is definitely the most important from those. So do we have to de decide that list, that the outreach list now, or can we? Yeah, that's a good question. You you don't have to right now. Um, I think it might be uh, council might have an opinion on what topic, so it might be good to um, at least have a leaning. But you could you could still leave it open for discussion. But um, your the work plan could say residential outreach, for example, for organics recycling, and then they might say yes, or they might say wait. We really want you to do a little bit more on this other topic or or something. So I think um, give the council an idea of where of where you're headed. But if you wanted to adjust the topic, I think you still could. Okay. So, or or they might the adjust list. it for you. <laughs> so in that list, I would like to ask uh, to to add maybe energy efficiency in residential build buildings, which is a little bit of do with what Anna is mentioning. Yeah, so so um, energy efficiency. So like Anna was saying, like sustainable homes or something. Um, Bayardo, talk a little bit about your experience in working the um, open streets, because I think that's instructive. And Richard, you you've worked that with me as well. Um, what it's like to um, communicate with residents when you're when you're at one of those booths. Um, okay, I, I'm, I have the mic on, right? Yes, everybody here. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I think these events are great for everything that we do and to, in, uh, to interact with the, with the, with, with the, with the city sense, the citizens of, of the, of Edina, um, uh, to listen and to also give them feedback and, you know, let them know, educate them about what we're doing and 
where we need to basically their help on. However, I will say this caveat, because it all seems very attainable, um, but honestly, we don't know what the next few months and the next year are going to be like with this whole new meeting meeting through WebEx, WebEx failing, WebEx not failing thing. Um, I would say, if possible, let's keep the ones like uh, that are pretty much free set to go, like the, the, uh, the tree ordinance, the, the packaging ordinance also, which are pretty much on the on the pipeline and just would need some a little bit of push to get it to get it through to the council. Um, then again, council can come back and say, no, we don't want those. We want something else also. Well, and I'm thinking when you're talking to a, a person walking by, one message is enough to talk to them and to give them a whole menu like this. I don't think you can get them to focus on that. Menu. No. I think I think having a very specific, you know, agenda or topic to discuss with the public is definitely a better approach than like having to bombard them with 50 things they're not going to reach one of them or we could say that there are going to be multiple events for different i could also topics. yeah I could also. then you have to have a gimmick for each one and materials for each one and like you know we had the lemonade stand and that was great but you could have the lemonade stand once and then sorting the garbage another time. Somebody's going to have to um, manage all that. That's, a, I guess, what I'm thinking of. It would involve a lot more people and sometimes volunteers don't really follow through. I, I would think because the organics recycling is so new, it would really benefit greatly by uh, a little bit more messaging on that specifically. And then in 2021, as you're working through like the climate action plan, then perhaps through that process, just like with the flood risk reduction strategy, you can develop some materials through that process. And then you can take that after that effort and have a whole new set of things. And, and that could potentially be one of those uh, del deliverables essentially where you have this package of something now that you can bring out and say, Hey, we did all this work and here are the things you can do. One, two, three. Um, so it could be, you know, 2021 focus on organics. 2022 could be the next big topic. Um, the next one action. I like this list. All right, so I think what I'll do is um, I'm, I'm here and keep everything um, and that you feel like it's an achievable um, work plan and I agree. So I think what I'll do is I'll put this into that work plan document format and then you guys can uh, think it over and then in September, um, I'll have it all formatted out and, and complete um, and it will incorporate uh, my feedback and then you can consider it in September. Thank you. Um, question on the work plan here. Do we need to fill in some more uh, leads and support? Uh, thank staff? you. Thank you, Commissioner Manser. I really appreciate that. Because yes, that is definitely something we need to do before we um, move on from this conversation. So. Um, Climate action plan. I do not have a lead for that. Um, and I have Takani and Anna Martinez and Commissioner Haran offering to provide support for that one. So would either one of those supporters be interested in moving to a lead or was there a new person who would like to serve as a lead for that? Hilda, would you be interested in that? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> I want to lead that. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to lead. The reason I, I ask is that's our highest priority. Um, as the chair, you might want to have some control over that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's not it's not because I'm not interested. It's because I. 
I really don't see the interest from, from the city. So I, I'm really a little bit disappointed. So I just don't want to be investing my time in something that's not going to move. I'd rather do something that it's going to move. So I'd rather lead something that we're going to do it. Uh, you know, I think it will move. We just need a staff person. And and if they end up hiring someone who isn't gung-ho about this, then you, you, you have the power to change that. You can step down. But... Um, but it's not going to happen unless somebody who's passionate about it drives it. Um, and that's, and, and as a chair, you have a, a pretty loud voice in that. And my well, two cents is um, the, we, we've got, we, you know, we, we, we made some good progress when, with Tara. And um, I think I, I'm pretty confident, you know, that, you know, the city the city made the commitment to, to, to fill that position. Um, you know, I was expecting a little more um, uh, from Chad with regard to, I was a little disappointed as you were with regard to how he presented that today. Um, but I think the city, the reason they've got that position and is, is you know, a key part of that is driving the sustainability or climate action um, program. So um, I, I'm feeling com pretty comfortable that we're going to make some significant progress when we get that position filled. If not, it's not going to happen. You know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be kind of black and white, quite honestly. So nobody is inter nobody else is interested in leading that? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat what I said. I think if the chair doesn't take it, you could pretty much say it's going to die. Um, I, I really, I, I strongly encourage you to take that um, and, and be a loud voice uh, advocating for it. Okay, well, I'll take it. I'll take the link. And you have, you have some support, so we'll Thank be you. there. So definitely, thank you for stepping up. I, I can vouch for Michelle. If she says she's going to help, it's done. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So okay. Should... Uh, enhanced tree ordinance and city tree strategy. So that would be, I'm going to revise this right now. That would be a review and comment because it's a staff work plan item. So um, we have a lead and a support. Volunteer. Paul, yeah, I can. I can take. I can take the lead on that. All right, this is Paul. Yep. Okay. And, and this is Richard. I'll. I'll be. I'll support that. I'll be happy to support that also. I can help. More in, in, like if you need more help. Perfect. All right, to go packaging and plastic ban ordinance. Is it typical to have um, multiple in the lead category? Can you guys tell me from the past if that's, or is it really just like choosing one person? I'm all for co leaders. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. The only thing is I just have, I have all the reports on the to-go packaging and plastic bags. Um, and Decane, I know, mm -hmm. um, Okasha, you have the people. Effort and the community and ideas yeah. and everything, yeah. So I'm all for sharing workloads. Great. Mm -hmm. And I can support that too. I can support that too. Oops, oops, oops. Oh boy. All right. Um, business recognition program. Well, I'm, is my name I out? I want to say we're going to get new commissioners in um, March. So some of these things we can, you know, hand off. Um, and, uh, I didn't realize that my I didn't put my name as a lead for that. So I can, I'll yeah, I'll stay. Great. 
Yeah, and uh, Commissioner Jackson, you bring up a good point. As new commissioners come on too for next year, we can you can shuffle these too. Well, I will stay on the green building policy because that's something I'm passionate about. But um, that's also something that probably won't be till the end of the year or further into the year. Isn't that a staff um, thing? It's review and comment. So leave me on that. Um, but I. I can Anyone want to jump in on support for the green building policy initiative? I think that would just be a matter of reading it and, and raising it. I don't think that'll need support. Okay, sounds good. I can, uh, can support that. Okay, thank you. All right, and then the last, the other ones I have on here. Um, let's see. Um, this um, capital improvement plan review. I don't know that that really needs a lead. I think that the staff person is going to give it to you and then you would review and comment on that. So I don't think that really needs a lead in support, but you can let me know if that's really atypical. And then resident outreach, we should select a lead in support for that one. Hey, Ardo, would you I'll, I'll take the lead on that one again. All right, I'm just gonna find it here in my list. Well, since you combined them, Jessica, why don't you put on your notes? There's cheese, Daddy's cheese. You wanna do that? Yeah. I know, I know it's cheese. I heard uh, Lancis is the lead. Anyone else for support on that? The organics? Mm -hmm. I can support any of that. Like if I'm already supporting too many, I'm willing well, to. We'll have, we'll have students and, um, you know, Celie, would you be willing to, to help um, uh, with um, setting um, Bayardo up before your term is up? Yeah. Okay. And then I can also help once, if needed. And Celie. Got it. Okay. All right. I think um, we. Commissioner Seely, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I think we have what we need for that. Thank you. Anything else you want me to know? That's great. Thanks for organizing all this. So should we, should we vote for that or no? No, right? It's just no. Next month. Next month we will. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the next. Uh, uh, which one is an a chair and member com comments regarding green business recognition program working group update? Um, good question. Yes, Commissioner um, I will... Zaka. Dasha. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, so I was wondering when will the action plans, uh, the priorities will take into effect? I mean, is it something that will be starting on 2021 or are we just starting those conversations right now? So uh, at your September meeting, the commission will take action on the proposed work plan for 2021. Mm -hmm. And then uh, staff and the city manager, Scott Neal, will add their comments. And then that will go to city council um, and they will approve the commission work plans in December. And then those work plans officially start in January of 2021. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And um, the chair will be um, invited to attend the city council work session on October 6th. Okay. Perfect. About the proposal, and I'll of course help you to um, Hilda just to prepare for that. Um, essentially, you're going to tell council what you guys want to work on in 2021, and then hear their feedback, and they'll tell you if they want to modify anything, um, so that we can uh, have a good idea of what they want to approve for December. So I I can help you with that, and I I think the outgoing um, Commissioner Jackson, if you'd help to just give some advice, perhaps on on what that's like, yeah, that'd be helpful. Yeah. It's pretty pretty low stakes, so I'll I'll help you prepare for that one. Okay. So just one question. So it could we we go to present and they they may say no, I'm uh, this one this is not a priority, so they can take some of that maybe or they 
can recommend another one that maybe we're not considering, right? Okay. Right. Yep. If they're saying we're hearing a lot about this thing and we really want you to work on this topic, they could add it. Um, or if they say we're really not prepared to go down this road on this specific thing, they could remove it. Um, I think all of the things that you've you've got on your proposed work plan are all things that they have expressed a lot of interest in. So I, I wouldn't expect them to really like remove things unless they were to replace it with something else that were a, a, a new high priority, which I, I don't think anything else is on, nothing else is on my radar. I think you guys have a pretty uh, good proposed work plan at this point. Okay, perfect. Okay, so following up with the agenda, we have the chairs and member comments. So we will start with the Green Business Recognition Program Working Group Update, which I think is you, Caroline, Commissioner Jackson. Oh, or... actually, um, Commissioner Horan. Yeah, so Sorry. I'll take that. Sorry. No, don't worry, you're, you're just new. Um, so exciting, we have officially recognized the Galleria. I think I'd mentioned that at our last meeting, um, but we, um, our working group members met with Michael Olson from the Galleria and he works actually the Heinz, um, Heinz is the owner of the gallery and um, he was really willing to tell about, tell us about all the things that they've done. And we were there kind of to double check that they are doing these things because they're doing a, a lot um, and figure out how they're doing it. And, um, and then um, we all voted basically our group saying that they are officially recognized and Liz has taken that and sent um, the, Michael, the email saying that he are um, the gallery is recognized, and then they'll get out a letter with um, the decal out shortly after. So it was um, it was really exciting to talk to him, just all the things that they're doing, um, and he is very willing to contact tenants and see if they are willing to um, take some actions and and apply as well. And so that's nice that we have. Um, somebody also going in and um, supporting the program. So um, kind of excited. And he also was willing to, they have yearly meetings for their tenants and he was willing to um, take some time in those meetings and go over the program as well. Um, some things that we need to, we're gonna start talking about is uh, the, we're coming up on a year of our um, first recognized businesses and just kind of how we're gonna do that. Um, and um, we're kind of just basically trying to see how we can do an update of an application so they don't have to redo the entire application, just see what updates are, and then we can recognize them again for the next year. Um, and then um, I've got some things I'll probably be asking you, Jessica, as far as like we've got resources page that um, we've gathered some resources for businesses. And one thing I would like to do, Jessica, is get that information you mentioned about um, water conservation and a, a person, uh, an intern or something. And I could maybe add that too, but do some more diving into some of that. But um, also wondering if I have a physical application, which is actually sometimes easier for businesses to look at because then they can kind of go back and forth or um, one of our members could go over it with them. And is some of those documents, is that something that we could get branded by um, like letterhead, city letterhead or anything to make it look official? The application? Yeah, package? the like a physical, yeah. Yeah, I think right. so. Okay. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's exciting um, to see, to have the gallery and something so visible in the city. And it's just kind of trying to figure out how we can leverage that for um, other businesses to take part, as well as citizens to, un to realize that. So we want to get the word out. So that's all I got. Good job. Oh, Michelle, I have a question. So, how how do, um are are we like how do, how are you gonna let like the the citizens know about um, that gallery is doing all these wonderful things? Is there like um are you giving like a, I don't know, like an award or uh, are something that they will put in their building or yeah. yeah? So they get a decal that goes and it says um you know Edina whatever green business recognition. So it's a okay. window decal that they'll get that they do get. Um, we do quarterly um, press releases. The city sends those out. Um, there was something on about town. And so if there's, you know, we try and brainstorm other ways to um, find 
you know, avenues to get the message out, but those are the key ones right now. So okay. if anybody has any fun ideas, um, yeah, let me know. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, the next uh, item is the working group minutes. Yep, and this one is on here just to, to, for you to receive the working group minutes, so we can move past that item unless Commissioner Horan has anything else to add. Nope. Okay. Okay. And the uh, last uh, uh, in this session is the Climate Action Plan, Plan Committee update, which I was the one leading this um, this activity. Um, um, we were working in well. The objective of this um, of this committee was well, it has two objectives. The first one was to revise certain number of uh, climate action plans to see uh, what uh, what actions they were doing and if if and and if from them we can we we could do something uh, before the climate action planning started with the task force. So we revised, uh, we came with this Excel table that Jessica is presenting. And what we did is we revised six cities, three of them in Minnesota and three of them in the rest of the country. In Minnesota, we revised uh, Minneapolis, St. Louis Park and Eden Prairie. They all have a climate action plan. And in the country, we revised Fort Collins in Colorado, Somerville in Massachusetts and Iowa City in Iowa. Um, other than Minneapolis and Fort Collins, the rest of the cities, they have similar population and three of them have the same type of government as in the city of Edina. Um, as I mentioned before, like six out of the six, five out of the six uh, climate action plans, they have set a long-term carbon neutrality goal by 2050. St. Louis Park, they set the, their carbon neutrality goal by 2040, and they all have um, a, an ambitious goal of reduction for 2030. They, they, are, they are proposing, they go, they, the reductions go between the 40 and 80% of their greenhouse ga gas emissions. Uh, what, um, uh, some of the things that we found out is that this, that all of them, uh, they have an intense participation of the community. They they either either establish a climate action committee or a um, citizen advisor committee. They are working on the plan. They did a lot of outreach to the community. They work with different stakeholders. They did participate in the structuring the plan. So I think that's one of the key things that should be considered for the Dyna climate action plan. Um, as I mentioned also, they all include a greenhouse emission inventory, which is key to track the effectiveness of any measure that it's included in a, in a climate action plan. Because if we don't know where, where we stand, we, we, we are not able to know how much are we reducing. Um, they basically include um, se the, the sectors that has been identified in the indicators that, that uh, Carol mentioned, like transportation, waste, building, they did a lot of, in, all of them include things in adaptation, and some of them include uh, equity issues. Uh, among the highlights, I'm going to, I'm not going to go through all the tables, but I'm going to mention some of them. For example, in electricity, all of them have um, uh, renewable electricity goals either by on-site renewable electricity like solar gardens or utility program options. Um, and, and four of them have utility programs to incorporate renewable energy at the residential and commercial buildings. Um, in, in the building sector, they have a very strict building energy codes for new developments. They have like a rental energy disclosure requirements and they also propose uh, retrofit for residential and commercial buildings uh, with a lot of energy efficiency measures. In the transportation, they all of them include um, uh, um, in adoption of ele uh, um, electric vehicles, either by developing public charging infrastructure or by, or by purchasing city Vehicle, vehicular fleet that is electric. 
They also do a lot of work in transport demand management policy, like um, with the aim to reduce uh, single vehicle occupancy, which has to do with uh, the manage management of parking spaces, like setting maximum spaces or unbundling parking from rents, um, trying to establish mobility hubs and building protected cy cycling infrastructure so people are more uh, are, feel more safe uh, going in in bicycles um what it was uh, what it was very surprising is that for waste edina i think the the measures edina is taking are more more uh, advanced than the ones that all of the six um climate action plan have uh, so I we, I really didn't find something like like that the like that Edina hasn't been doing like most of them include the or they 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 they're doing recycling they they trying to reduce the landfill uh, waste and they are doing a lot of uh, also the the organic recycling um, for adaptation some of the things that I think were important is that they are um, some of them have urban forestry management plan. And also for waste um, for water, they have improved some water, some water management. So I think probably that those are things that that I think Edina is doing, but they also they can consider some others. And uh, regarding equity and co-benefits, um, uh, Iowa City, Somerville, and Fort Collins they all include an an analysis of both equity and co-benefits for all of the actions that they consider in their plans. Uh, Minneapolis and St. Louis Park, they cover some equity issues, but they don't do a, a very in-depth analysis of those uh, issues. And Eden Prairie, they don't, they don't mention either equity or co-benefits. So, the, the second objective was the recommendations of what we can do as a as a commission um, before before the without a climate action plan, and those are the, the recommendations uh, we mentioned before and that we already voted. So I guess basically that is what we we work on. Um, I, I I I I don't know if maybe Jessica can share. It through mail the, the Excel document that I sh that I sent her. I think it has a lot of information that can eventually be be used for uh, by the, the 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 tax force that is going to eventually be created for the climate action plan. And as I mentioned, there are some things that Edina is already doing without an action plan, a climate action plan, and there are some other new uh, actions that can be taken. And I think it's worth. Since some of them, since most of them has um, the same population and they have the same type of governments, maybe the the the, the Edina is is able to take some of them uh, for consideration in the climate action plan. So I don't know if anybody of you have any uh, questions about it. I will send this that out too after the meeting so folks can take a, a closer look at it and I can add it to the packet so that in the future, if anyone wants to look back on this meeting, they can find it too. Okay, thank you. Can I just say too, you know, when you look at the, the, the notes for the work plan, I mean, really the only thing, unless I'm, I'm my question is, can we, reword this or make it more broad and for the climate action plan because really the only thing that can really be done then before the task force and or the sustainability coordinator is the research for the ghg emissions so if could could we can we leave it worded in such a way where if 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 commissioner martinez comes across like a great idea of something that could possibly be worked on before the task force is created that that doesn't that there's no conflict with the way the work plan is worded. Um, I think it's got to have some level of of specificity. Um, is there is there a way to then yeah. put wording in there that says um, something to the effect of if you know. Um, I don't know. Is there is it is it valuable to have a line item in there that says something to the effect of 
um, you know, research or something like that that can be done prior to the task force being established? Or is that not? So, Commissioner Seeley, if something comes up, we can always send a communication to the city council asking it to add it to our work plan. True. Um, uh, but then if we look at, so with the climate action plan, a commissioner to serve review and comment um, research tools for the greenhouse gas emissions inventory. I think what staff have been telling us is that they really want the task force to get broad community input on what goes into the plan um, so that we don't have it predetermined before that starts. I think that- I totally get that. I'm just, I'm just thinking of this now long timeline and, you know, again, I think of, you know, we're all feeling frustrated by the fact that our hands are sort of tied here. So I'm just trying to think of any way to just leave any window open for anything that can be done prior to that. I get it without stepping on the toes of the process and the people who are going to ultimately be on that task force. I think Commissioner Jackson brings up a really good point where there is a process already in place where if something comes up that you want to work on, uh, we can always amend the work plan. So I think having the ha, having um, the detail of what you intend to do uh, when you're proposing it is the way to go. Um, and then as things pop up that you wanna revise or add, then you can do it at, through that process. Okay. Would we, the, yeah, another real, question. Realistically, can I, add, can I add something though? Realistically, if it's something that's gonna involve staff time, um, you know, then then it's um, important to get it in early to make sure that there's staff time. Um, if it's something that would require minimal staff time and we add it later, then it'll be something that's easier to add. Um, anyway, that's that's my read. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think if you have a specific thing, let's add it now. Um, Could we add item number X? letter X that would allow a fair amount of research to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Okay. Lord. Yeah, me too. It's uh, it's the X, which is. Is it this carbon yeah, neutrality? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think that's that makes sense and it's a specific thing so I, I think that you can add that if if you're considering it included now yes okay so anybody has any more common comments on this issue great work oh. Thank you, Anna and Lauren did a, did a really great great work, and it was based on what Lauren did before the year before. So, yeah, we're gonna miss her. <laughs> Very much. So. Thank you, Hilda. You're doing an awesome job. Should we? Do we need to add a lead and supporting people for X? Um, I'm I'm kind of just lumping that they're like sub items under climate action plan is kind of how I'm seeing it. Does that sound okay? Okay. I, I will have to, I'll be happy to lead that one, the carbon neutrality thing. If you need a leader. Yeah, I, I think we'll keep it under this um, climate action plan as a bigger item. So Hilda, I have you leading that to Connie Martinez and Haran as okay. support. So I think it's just kind of bundled under that bigger one. Um, if that's all right with you guys. Okay. Perfect. So, well, uh, so we now are in the staff comments. So energy benchmarking updates. Yeah, just a few really brief updates. So the, there are 140 buildings that are subject to that energy uh, benchmarking ordinance. Mm -hmm. And uh, 95 have submitted their information so far. So that's 68%. Uh, 77 are fully in compliance, and that's just um, kind of that delay in the quality control and verifying. So it's not that those other ones are are not in compliance, it's just they're still in that process of verifying. 
So 77 fully done, fully compliant, 55%. Uh, uh, Edina is the highest compliance rate out of all those the um, efficient building coalition cities. So St. Paul has 49% submitted, 39% fully in compliance. St. Louis Park has 40% submitted, 29% fully in compliance. Um, so those ones that aren't in compliance yet, they're, they're just working through errors that were found in their submissions. So we're feeling really good about that rate given the circumstances. Yes. <laughs> Very good rate. Yes. Uh, the organics recycling um, in July, we picked up 97 tons of organics in Edina and Twyla has set a goal to um, collect 100 tons per month, every month. She said that contamination remains shockingly low and that the managers at commercial composting facilities report that organic loads from Edina are the cleanest they've ever seen. And that's a direct <laughs> quote. <laughs> so Twyla is feeling wow, very um, awesome. proud and hopeful. Yeah, I think that's something to be really proud of. Um, participation rates, she said, have not increased. They're still in the 25 to 30% range. Wow. Um, and then communications, um, we've been exchanging emails between communications and Twyla for a utility bill insert, doing some organics recycling education. So that'll go to the printer in September. So Twyla is helping communications to craft that message. Jessica, I'm sorry, I got a question back to yep. the recycling. 25% participation of Edina residents does that Correct. mean only 25% of residents are putting their carts out? I believe that's what it means. And I know um, Twyla has said that there are some neighborhoods where someone might not feel like they have enough to warrant a cart, so they have declined a cart, but they're kind of sharing with a neighbor. Um, so she has several stories like that to share. Um, and then there are some where folks feel like their garages are too small to accommodate another cart. And so they're, they've also declined a cart just so they could pool their organics uh, and have fewer in the neighborhood versus everyone having one. So I think people are getting creative and finding solutions that work for their specific um, need and circumstance. Um, so I think I, it might not be a big percentage, but I think sometimes when people don't have a card, it's not that they're not participating. Um, there's a small uh, population that are, and they're just kind of working together with their with their neighbors to do it. But yeah, I think over, that's probably a small small percentage. Um, so yeah, 25 to 30 percent on the whole are putting their carts out for pickup. Do we know how many? Um how many what percentage of the residents were already Veercant organics customers that is a good question i don't know i could ask twyla if she knows that just curious yeah so i have another question for you jessica like she said that for july it was 96 tones and there and she and her goal was 110 for uh, with which with which percentage of participation or i believe that is with that same rate of participation okay. so the goal 100 tons per month is okay okay and one more question jessica it, does twyla have a goal of participation rate um i will have to ask her that if she has kind of a target participation rate or if there's any way to like benchmark it against other communities. I'll have to mm -hmm. ask for that. Great, thank you. Yep. Paul, I think that that goal is probably gonna be on a long run rather than immediately so that people get used to having the uh, compostable recyclables. Uh, kind of like, I guess, adjusting from like actual just recyclables. People are slowly gonna have to get in, in line with it. Other comments about organics? Questions or requests for more information? 
Uh, the last thing I have for you is um, every semester we try to come up with a project for the Senior University of Minnesota Engineering students to work on as like their semester capstone project. So in the past, they've done things for like designing ADA compliant um, transportation features or like the flood risk reduction strategy. Before we had a task force, we gave the students an early kind of attempt at that. Same with the clean water strategy. There's a student effort already for that. Um, and then there's a couple here that I thought you'd be interested in. The um, uh, one is about embodied carbon. And then the other one is um, uh, the travel demand management. So they're, they're student efforts, um, but they're kind of like a way to get some really like creative and new ideas. Uh, and then staff takes those and kind of builds off those to develop a city of Edina policy or, or program or project. So those are included um, in the packet materials. Feel free to take a look. And if you have any ideas on like a future thing, I'd be open to that too. And um, we could consider submitting that for a future project if you have ideas. And I, that's all I have. Okay, so uh, with that, should we conclude the meeting? Is there anything else? I, I, I'm sorry, I mean, this is my first time. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so adjournment. Yeah, adjournment, so should we, should I read the, what is next? Yeah. So, okay. so you could ask for um, a motion to adjourn, and then you'd have a, a motion, uh, someone to move it, and a second it, and then you could ask me to do roll call, and I will do that for you. Okay. So I will do the mo motions to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Okay. So so I have the first and second. So just make a roll. Second. Paul. Got it. Uh, and then and then we'll do a roll call. Yeah, okay, perfect. All right. Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Commissioner Dakani. Aye. Commissioner Haran. Aye. Commissioner Hushin. Aye. Commissioner Lanzis. Aye. Commissioner Manser. Aye. Chair Martinez. Aye. Commissioner Setterly. Aye. Commissioner Seely. Aye. Aye. All right. I think that's it. Thanks, right. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have a good night. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.